Hi, guess what? If I lived in Victoria, which I don't, but if I did, Victoria, Australia, that is, which is another state here, I live in New South Wales, far superior state, by the way. Anyway, if I lived in Victoria, it would be now illegal, as of yesterday, for me to call myself a professional engineer. I know that I'm a now a professional YouTuber, but anyway, it'd be illegal for me to call myself a professional engineer. And hi to all my Victorian viewers, congratulations, you better remove that title from your resume or from any of your LinkedIn or anywhere else, unless you're registered, I guess. So thanks for someone on Twitter for pointing this out. The Professional Engineers Registration Bill 2019, the Parliament of Victoria, looks like it just passed yesterday. So congratulations. Um, There was, I had heard nothing about this, there was a discussion period or something like that, which um, has ended and it is now passed. And everything in here now applies to any, well, not any engineer, let's go down and take a look, applies to structural engineering, civil engineering, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, fire safety engineering, and any other prescribed area of engineering. What is, I'm not quite sure what that means. Does that mean like computer engineers, software engineers? What, like, are they just, is this an all encompassing term for anything? I don't know. So just a little bit of uh, background here. I've actually done a video, 1175 for those playing along at home, how to become a professional engineer. I'll link it in at the end and down below. If you haven't seen it, highly recommend it. it goes through all the different types of, uh, specifically to electronics uh, engineering, the different levels of engineering, the different uh, qualifications and things like that of electronics engineers. Now I'm not talking about other aspects of engineering here. I might mention in a minute, but electronics slash electrical engineers working on, you know, circuit design, whether or not you call yourself an electronics engineer or an electrical engineer, doesn't really matter. Technically, I'm an electrical engineer by qualification, but you know, whatever, I'm always been an electronics engineer. But that's just, you know, academic. A lot of electronics engineering courses are called electrical engineering. It's just the generic term for it, which this new uh, bill encompasses. So as I explained in this video, we actually have a long, rich history here in Australia uh, for electrical slash electronics engineers in the business. Uh, many of them are unqualified, countless uh, engineers. You do not need engineering qualifications to become a professional electronics uh, slash electrical design engineer here in Australia. I know that's very different in other countries. It is very regimented. They have very similar laws and bills like uh, that has just passed in Victoria here. But we've been operating up until now that anyone in Australia can call themselves an engineer. I realize where this uh, bill comes from because we've had a recent huge, like it's made national news in Australia in the last year or two about uh, how we've had all sorts of building faults, both commercial and in particular residential uh, buildings, like apartments, units, things like that. They're not building them up to scratch and they're falling down, they're crumbling. And some say a national crisis here in Australia of, about uh, these shoddy buildings that have gone up. So I know where this has come from and I fully support this kind of stuff for things that have to do with our safety, like buildings, bridges, all that sort of jazz. Now, unfortunately, or fortunately, depends on what your opinion is, leave your opinion down below. Um, this now encompasses electrical engineering and almost by definition, my job, electronics design engineering. And most of my uh, audience, uh, that's what we do. We do electrical slash electronics engineering design. And this is kind of being caught up in that, as has like basic mechanical engineering now. So I, yeah, th this has been caught up in this structural and civil engineering thing that's all, all everyone in Australia is going crazy about. And unfortunately it's passed in Victoria and it sounds like it may be the catalyst for it to happen Australia wide. So I'm not personally affected yet, but everyone, all my viewers in Victoria certainly will be as of yesterday. But let's just have a look at what the offenses are, shall we? Part five, uh, offense to provide professional engineering services without registration. One, a person must not provide professional engineering services in a particular area of engineering. I assume that means the list above, including 
in electrical and almost by definition electronics really um, in an area or providing the professional engineering service under the direct supervision of a person who is registered as a practicing professional engineer. Right, panel, 500 penalty units. I don't know, there's a monetary value assigned to penalty units. I don't know how much that is. Now, it's an offence to hold out to be registered or endorsed without registration. A person who is not registered as a practicing professional engineer in a particular area of engineering must not represent that the person is able to provide professional engineering services in that area of engineering. So you are not able to say, hey, I can provide you professional engineering services and some I I can kind of agree with that I guess but we'll we'll get to that a person who is not an endorsed building engineer must not represent that the person is an endorsed building engineer and therein you can see right there where the catalyst for this bill has come from it's you know it, it's from the building sector and hence the electronics industry that I and we care about being caught up in it. A person who is not registered as a non-practicing professional engineer must not represent that the person is registered as a non-practicing professional engineer. Huh? And here's the doozy. A person who is not a registered professional engineer must not use the title professional engineer. Yeah, let that sink in. So what they're trying to do here is actually protect the word professional engineer. Now, they are not through this bill they are not able to protect just the word engineer, it's only professional engineer. So, let's actually call up the Macquarie Dictionary, shall we, which is the standard uh, dictionary, the legal dictionary here in Australia. What does professional mean? Professional following an occupation as a means of livelihood or for gain a professional actor relating or appropriate to a profession making a business of something not properly to be regarded as a business undertaken or engaged in as a means of livelihood for a gain someone who makes a business of an occupation an expert in a game or sport so it's not illegal in australia even with the passing of this bill to call yourself an engineer but when you add professional to the front of it, even professional is implying that's what you do for your vocation. Hence, in my previous video talking about how to become an engineer, if you're doing engineering work and that's your vocation and that's what your peers recognize you as, that's what your company has called you, if you even if uh, you have no qualifications at all, very common in this country for you to be given the title of engineer, senior engineer, whatever it is, with engineer in the title because you've been given that uh, by your peers, by the company, by, you know, everyone, like, you're recognized in the industry as having the skills to perform that job as your vocation. And that's the word professional, that's what it means. But you're not allowed, to, now, in Victoria, you're not allowed to put the word professional in front of it. Unbelievable. So we're basically gotten to the point where it's similar to the Oregon engineer, uh, Matt Jellstrom, um, was fined 500 pounds. I've done a video on this, haven't I? I think I have. Anyway, um, he lives in Oregon and he, he did this great research about traffic lights and everything. And he is actually a qualified engineer in his native Sweden, but he's not a certified practicing, you know, registered engineer in the state of Oregon, and he simply um, sent something into council, some research into council about traffic lights, and they slapped him with this fine. So he took him to court, um, a federal court, I think, or w whatever, and he won based on, like, uh, freedom of speech, and he's allowed to call himself an engineer. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Woo! So uh, you can see what, you know, what's next? Simply calling yourself an engineer? that you do for your vocation? I bet you that's next. It's coming. And I know what you're saying. Hey, Dave, what's the problem, right? If you're qualified engineer, just get registered or whatever. Yeah, well, that's forcing people to join an organization they may not support. For example, uh, the Institute of Engineers Australia. I was actually a student member way, way back, but I, I just don't want to be part of the Institute of Engineers just like 
the vast majority of electronics design engineers here in Australia, we are not members of the Institute of Engineers Australia. It's just not a thing here. It's basically uh, for your mechanical engineers, your civil engineers, or those management engineers who like to have all those little fancy letters after their name. Vastly more engineers here in Australia are electronics engineers, a member of the Institute of Electronics uh, Engineers, the IEEE. I'm a card carrying member of the IEEE, but I'm not a member of the Institute of Engineers, and I don't want to be. But if you're in uh, Victoria, it looks like I don't know how you become registered. I guess it's either through the Institute of Engineers or this mob I've never heard of, the Association of Professional Engineers Australia, and they've got a blog post on this uh, bill. Let's have a look. Doctors, lawyers and tradies must register to get a license to practice their profession, but there is no such requirement for engineers. There still isn't. A registration scheme provides the government public with a peace of mind that only qualified engineers are making engineering decisions. At like, how far down the engineering tree do you go? Do you take that to software engineers? Like, do you take that to network engineers? Like, how far down? The, the, the rabbit hole do you go here? And here it is, like the Victorian government will continue to invest heavily in infrastructure. And this is where it all comes from. It comes from the building and civil engineering sectors, which I support being certified and things like that. But the electronics industry for someone who's just laying out a PCB or like, come on. Not only will a scheme assist the government and public in making informed decisions, but registration will develop your professional identity as an engineer, highlighting your skills and expertise. Woo! At present, anyone in Victoria can call themselves an engineer. A registration scheme serves to protect your professional identity. Think of the engineers, they're doing it for the engineers. Only qualified, competent, knowledgeable engineers will be registered, filtering out those who lack the appropriate skills and expertise. When you register, you will be admitted by the state as a professional engineer, opening the door for more jobs. It's all about you. You can get a better job that pays more. You can earn up to twenty-five thousand dollars more than their unregistered than your uh, rogue unregistered colleagues. Beauty. As well as status, your professional identity is formed by your ongoing commitment to your area of expertise. Should registration pass the upper house, you'll be required to commit to your ongoing development through a minimum log of CPD, continuing professional development hours. It sounds like an extra requirement. However, all you really need to do is document any training or development you have done to move up the ladder in your workplace. <laughs> is my nose brown enough? Does that qualify? You may be surprised at how many hours of arse licking CPD you do during one single year. You can build your hours through on-the-job learning seminars, webinars, and online courses you have completed. Watch the EEV log, and you can put that on your competency. What do they call it? CPD. Continued professional development hours. Just watch the EEV log. Oh, can you apply for registration? Take the test. It, it, well, according to this website, it is only applicable to four-year Bachelor of Engineering degrees under, so it's a Washington Accord one. And I've done, you'll have to watch my previous video for the Washington Accord, basically a four-year qualification. So it looks like it doesn't apply to three-year or two-year qualifications. Wow. So yeah, you'll have to watch my other video. I go into the Washington Accord and all the, all the different accords, different levels for different accords. So what does that do to the engineering tech, the three-year engineering technologists or the two-year uh, network engineers or, or, you know, other sorts of software engineers, you know, three-year software degrees and, you know, other types of ones that aren't covered under the Washington Accord. What happens to those? Not allowed to call themselves a professional engineer, even they're an engineer by vocation. They can't even register even if they want to. You know, that's the real problem with these sorts of bills. They they try to be all encompassing and somebody's gonna come a guts of somewhere, guaranteed. So yeah, anyway, naturally the uh, engineers, um, Engineers Australia, they welcome this compulsory registration of engineers and yeah, compulsory, thank you very much. And they're urging the other states and territories to follow Victoria's lead. So coming to New South Wales soon. <laughs> and everyone in Australia won't be able to call themselves a professional engineer unless you got the four-year degree uh, under the Washington Accord and you pay your dues to either, I guess, either one of these mobs or some other. Maybe should just, could be good money in this. Maybe I should start my own engineering institute. Winner, winner, chicken dinner.
Yep, and here's their latest post today. They're gloating. It's been passed. Yay! Where do I start? Here's everything you need. Yep, up to you need a four-year full-time bachelor's degree or master's from an accredited institution. All is not lost if you don't have this as part-time equivalent degree or a historical equivalent qualification. So to get registered, you would need 150 hours professional development in the last three years you've got to prove. <laughs> just prove that you watched X number of EEV blog videos or just say you did and Bob's your uncle. Ah, you're welcome. Work experience. You need five years experience in the field. So it looks like graduates now and in the first five years, you cannot, according to this, any of this mob at least, you cannot call yourself a professional engineer. At least they won't certify you. Maybe you can go to the Institute of Engineers and they'll give you, maybe you can, you know, get accreditation as a graduate or something. <sighs> But it's all about you. The whole system exists to ensure you have a senior registered engineers to work with to build the experience needed to be registered yourself. But don't stress. You can't call yourself an engineer. If you've had to hit the five years, you just need more time to build up your professional development hours. And all you need is three other professional referees. They that have worked with you for the last 12 months. That have to be registered themselves. Otherwise, <laughs> bugger off. And a commitment to the code of ethics, which talks about professional contact, integrity, diligence, and decent decency? Oh, <laughs> rules me out. <laughs> well, I searched for code of ethics on their website, and well, I'm um, coming to gutter. I found it after searching on Google. Here it is. I love this one. Provide engineering services beneficial to the economy. So, well, it looks like solar roadways aren't going to be able to hire any Victorian engineers. <laughs> I do like the stuff about whistleblowing though. That's neat. Not behave in a manner that would damage the reputation of themselves and others. Oh, what? What? Hello, but that goes against the whistleblowing stuff up here. They, they basically tell you blow the whistle, but don't, then don't damage, damage the reputation of others. <laughs> well done. Don't misuse company, public and private property. Yes, mum, no more teardowns. So anyway, I'll uh, leave the link to this uh, down below. You can have a read for yourself. I'm going to have to read the whole thing, but it's going to be boring as bat poo, really. You search for electronics, right? Ele uh, electronics. I can spell. I'm an engineer. <laughs> Not anymore. E e electrical only appears once. Like they don't even really go into the definition of any of that. If you have to ask, you're covered. So if, I'm sure if I went to somebody and said, Am I, as an electronics engineer, covered in Victoria, covered, even though I'm not, but if you are in Victoria, are you covered by this bill? I'm sure everyone will say, oh yeah, yeah, you are. I think it would require a court ruling to rule otherwise. So anyway, I, I know this is like par for the course in many countries. Leave it in the comments down below if this is a thing in your country and you can't even, I know many countries can't even call yourself an engine, like the word engineer without this, but it's still not illegal in Australia, even with this to call yourself an engineer, but professional engineer, eh, like I can understand like chartered engineer, for example, the Institute of Engineers have this chartered engineering level and you have to go through a lot of rigmarole to get yourself registered as a chartered engineer. And sure, if they want to protect chartered engineer, I have no problem with that. In fact, I fully support it. That's fine. And dandy, I'm not going to go around calling myself a chartered engineer, but simply a professional engineer. The word professional means that's what I do for my profession, for my vocation to earn a living. And it's legal for companies to hire anyone as an engineer, even if you're not registered or even if you're not qualified. And yet you can't call it technically, you can get fined for calling yourself a professional engineer. <sighs> Unbelievable. I, I, like, yeah, I said this bill is a good thing for many industries, but it's going to have, unfortunately, a side impact on the electronics ind industry, which I don't necessarily agree with. But anyway, um, let us know what you think in the comments down below and let us know what's happening in your country. Anyway, catch you next time. Hello.